tune in for Patrick Ching's painting in paradise. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching, and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we enjoy the beautiful setting of Waimanalo and an intensive artistic retreat with some special guests. Where blue meets blue, and the ocean and sky become one. Join us as we learn how to see nature and figure out how to recreate it with paint. I'll even show you how I draw a seabird called the red-footed booby, also known in Hawaiian as A. Ah. All this in a Waimanalo style episode of Painting in Paradise! At our first ever Waimanalo artist retreat, we gathered a group of art students from around the globe to join us for a weekend of nature and art. As we welcome our fellow artists, we share the aloha of Waimanalo with some homegrown hospitality. To our very special place, our ancestors come and gather in the old days. Kaupo, the gateway to heaven. So thank you, Kia But I wanted to welcome you, out of town guests. Thank welcome you. to Waimanalo. And even Kailua is out of town from Waimanalo. So. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the 57 bus. Oh, wow. And one more coming over here. Okay, we reach from across. Thank you for coming all the way from Waimea, Hawaii. All right, big island. Well, I just want to thank everybody for being here on our very first Waimanalo Artist Retreat. The weekend holds for us a lot of joy, mystery, suspense. <laughs> we even got a friendly visit by a couple canoes from the Waimanalo Canoe Club. As the sunrise lights up the eastern sky, we get ready for a full day of art. Our friend and Hoku award-winning musician Kavika Kahiapo is also an accomplished painter. Kavika helps our brushes flow with some of his homegrown music. I want to thank everybody for waking up this morning. I know uh, Mother Nature was loud last night and I'm so excited I hardly slept at all. Today um, I'm going to start a journey of seeing nature closer than we ever have in our life. In fact, you know, tomorrow when you wake up, I hope you look at the sky and the world a whole different way. Here is a perfect example of a color wheel, okay? Now, the reason this color wheel is so important is because an artist will use this every single day of your artistic life. Good habit is starting at the bottom and working your way up. Do you believe you're going to have a beautiful painting in a few hours? Yes. All right. <laughs> you guarantee success. <laughs> what a feeling. 
if we look at my strokes and the spacing between the strokes, it looks like a zigzag scissors came and cut it. You're almost done with this, by the way. So. Sometimes, folks, you're seeing me have people do one layer, sometimes two or more. I'm trying to decide where I want solidness against airiness. It's almost like composing your darks and lights. Okay, man. Now it's time to stop aiming you guys. <laughs> Make it look like that. <laughs> As our day of painting goes on, we're joined by photographer Kim Taylor Reese. Our fantastic day ends with an aloha dinner and some insights by international surrealist artist John Petrie. Okay, well, I want to thank everybody for staying alive this long. Okay, beautiful day, started off pretty windy, we got a lot of beautiful painting done and some celebrities popped in and out including one of my favorite artists in the world, John Petrie. Uh, in the arts, you know, I try to tell stories. You know, if, if I don't get emotionally involved in it, I don't do it. Everything is symbolic. Nothing is actually what you see. Yeah, a rig of canoes re crossing the sea, going towards the light, the, you know, the fire is burning on the cliffs in a distance. That's, that's a goal. It's designed to, you know, emotionally plunk your heartstrings and, and make you feel something. And what you feel is going to be different than what she feels. He feels. The individual personal experiences are different, but the essence is the same. We have the ability to appreciate art, we have the ability to love, we have, uh, you know, we have passion, we, we recognize beautiful things, music, and all of that type of thing. Yet there is a little bit of a dark side to humanity too, of which you see all the time. I took my paintings and put together a little movie, and it tells the story of mankind through painting, and through my eyes as I painted the paintings. Mm -hmm. And I got some, some beautiful music in the background, and I got a lovely lady to narrate it. So here we go. Okay, get in your zone now. Oh, I lost my thing. Hey, move your head! We begin our journey through time on the beautiful
When we return, we'll explore the wild side of Waimanalo. We'll learn a little bit about the island of Manana and how it got its nickname, Rabbit Island. Waimanalo is a place where we're reminded that we are a part of nature and not apart from it. It's so nice to see the animals all around us. A young monk seal catches a trigger fish right in the shallow reef. And what better way to explore our surroundings than by putting some wind in our sails. Every morning the red-footed boobies head out from their nesting colony at Mokapu Peninsula and cruise the eastern shoreline before heading out to their ocean feeding grounds. The island looming prominently offshore is named Manana. It can be loosely translated as buoyant or floating. When I was a kid, I only knew it as Rabbit Island. No one seemed to know why they called it Rabbit Island, so I made up a story about a rabbit that loved the seabirds. In researching the history of the name, I learned that during the sugar plantation era, all of the rabbits in Waimanalo were sent to live on Manana Island so that they wouldn't get out and eat all the sugarcane. The rabbits thrived on Manana for about a hundred years and the last ones were seen there in the 1990s. And that's how Manana got the nickname of Rabbit Island. Today Manana is a refuge island with a robust population of native seabirds and also a birthing site of the Hawaiian monk seal. Then it's back to our final day of painting some of the places and animals of Waimanalo. My name is Zelka Terrientes. I am from Panama. I wanted to paint waves because I love them. 
Every time that I come to Hawaii, I go to the North Shore and I take a lot of photos. And one of those photos is what I painted today. Hi, I am Kiloe Wilson. I'm from Manalo. Well, yesterday I painted this. This is my first uh, painting. And with, with him showing us how to do it and just the instructions, this is what we came out with. This is my first one ever. And this is my second painting ever. And I'm so stoked that I came here this weekend with um, Patrick and all the other participants. We met a wonderful bunch of people from the filming crew to the people from the mainland and all over the islands. I am Gail Barangi and I live in Kailua. And I just really enjoy painting with Patrick. It was my dream. Um, always admired him from a young man, the skills that he has. I did these two paintings here, the booby bird, and um, my son-in-law is from Waimanalo, so he's been after me to paint this scene for him, so I have it. And the booby bird, I love painting um, the birds of Hawaii. I enjoyed his uh, technique of the blending, and that's what I really wanted to know, how he made his scenes um, so inviting. And finally, a single with a castaway party, Gilligan's Island style. Even Elvis, otherwise known as artist Jeff Pagai, was there to help us top off the weekend. We finished off our Waimanalo art retreat with a talk by Kim Taylor Reese on the importance of composing darks and lights in your art. Okay, do the wave. Okay, like this now. Back again. All right. Okay, and the reason I'm so happy to have Kim Taylor Reese here is because, um, first of all, he surprised me with his painting skills, but uh, I didn't realize he had such a background with painting. But I did know something that he's a true artist, and he knows real art. And when I say real art, the important stuff, the important stuff that people from other planets know about real art, even if they don't know that's a coconut tree and that's a turtle, that's a hula dancer, they look at his photographs and they say, that guy is good. I really enjoy um, working with art. I, I had a great time yesterday. It was like, oh my God, it was like mm -hmm. you were meditating. I've never seen you so calm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you guys a little bit of background. Of where I started out as an artist when I was younger and um, I, I studied art through school and I got into college and my teachers figured out I was colorblind so they told me if I didn't change my major I'd end up being a starving artist. So I have a degree in something else but I always would come back to art and I really, really liked the, the hula dancers here in Hawaii so that medium for me gave me more impact and the images were stronger. Black and white just has like a more an emotional kind of a connection that's easier for people to relate to. But what I really focus on is graphics, uh, composition, um, the darks and the lights, the shadows and those kind of things that give you depth and give you uh, that kind of stuff. With color, yesterday Patrick had to mix more than half of my colors. <laughs> Now get your pencils and paper ready, because when we return, I'll show you how to draw a seabird known as the red-footed booby, or in Hawaiian, ah. Yes, they probably got that name because of the squawking call they make when they fly. Ah! If I were a painter, I would paint my reverie. If that's the only way for you to be with me. We'd be there together, just like we used to be. Underneath the 
swirling skies for all to see and I'm dreaming of a place where I could see your face and I think my brush would take me there but only if I were a painter and could paint a memory I'd climb inside the swirling sky all right, gang, so now I'm going to show you how you can draw a red-footed booby, okay? That's a seabird with red feet. In Hawaiian, it's called... Ah. 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 Choo. Ah. I'm going to start this red-footed booby with simple shapes like ovals and a triangle or two. Now, this lesson can be used and adopted to draw other birds in flight as well. Okay, I'm going to start my drawing with a kind of an egg shape right there in the center of the page there. Kind of like a good size egg. Okay, that's going to be the body. Attached to it, I'm going to put like another egg shape for the head. And back towards the rear end of the bird's body, I'm going to extend a little point over there, okay? So now you can see our bird's body and head. And for the beak, will give it kind of a nice little triangle shape, a little curved on top, just about like that, okay? Uh, I'm gonna start with an oval like that, about there, and I'm gonna attach another oval over here for the tip of the wing, okay? Uh, down here, I'm gonna have another oval here. Let's see, I think I'll shape that oval there. And attach another oval almost to the corner of the page there okay so you see my wings you also see me make a little bit of a mistake that I easily adjusted the tail is kind of like a diamond shape it's a little bit pointed and I will um, kind of create a diamond shape back there okay and finally I'll put its big old red feet uh, trailing behind it over there okay and they're also gonna be kind of like a diamond shape Okay. Now I'm going to use this form up of a red-footed booby as a guide. Okay, so I'm going to be connecting lines over here and, you know, connecting lines over there. That's going to give me a good idea for my next stage of the drawing, which is the outlining and detailing. I'll be using a pen so you can see this. You can just go ahead and press harder. And I'll start him right over here at the bird's top of the body, swooping it across the top of the head, right down the beak to the point there, and then around the body. I'll stop right by that foot, go behind the feet for the rump area, and I'll connect this little line there. Now look what I do. I'm gonna put about maybe uh, eight lines in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that's gonna be my tail, okay? Tell you what, I'll easily just kinda have these feathers come like that. And you see me, I have a little bit of a diamond-shaped tail with the end feather being the longest. Now we can go and put these diamond-shaped feet in, okay? Kinda like webbed feet there. Okay, now for the wings, remember, they're just like your arm, okay? Whoa! Okay, so we can uh, swoop them like that, come to a little point there, all the way to the corner of the page. Oh, yeah. Okay, this one back there goes like that, and almost to the corner of the page again. But I'm going to put his eyeball, his maka, it goes right around there. Look how big that beak is. It goes right into the eye like that, okay? And then you can make a little line right here for the divide of the beak there. And you can fill in the eye, maybe leave a little white spot like a glint or a glimmer. Now for this bird, the last thing I can do is make a little black trailing edge of feathers. And you can be doing this with a pen, or you can just use paints on this. Like I said, they got lots of beautiful colors in their 
beak. Okay, and the last thing I can do on this drawing, I'll put a little background, maybe some clouds or something. Yep, you can use all of my sound effects if you want now. All right, throw a couple more birds back there. And there you have it. We just drew a red-footed booby known in Hawaiian as Ah. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you had a great time learning and laughing with us in Waimanalo. If you'd like to host an episode of Painting in Paradise, you can email me at patrick at patrickteachingart.com. Aloha. There's a place that I come from on the east side of paradise. Where blue meets blue And the ocean and sky become one Where the mountains and the sea That call out to me Come on over And the peaceful sound of the waves Come rolling in Waimanalo the place to be Wamanalo Love by all who come to see Kuvahipana Kukula Yivi Kuwaila Oha The Kupuna and the Keiki